We're preparing to remove our brake rotor to replace it. In part one, we removed the caliper and the pads, and we'll show you replacing the pads. The next stage in doing a complete job, pads and rotor, is to remove the rotor. You'll notice we've got our rotor, or our uh, caliper, suspended with a bungee cord. That is so that it's not hanging by the hose and stressing the hose connections. To remove the bracket, we have two 16 millimeter bolts on the back here. The size on these bolts will vary from chassis to chassis. This one happens to be 16 millimeter. We will use our 16 millimeter socket and breaker bar. These will be fairly tight. Start on the bottom. And loosen. We'll loosen the top. And now we'll switch to our ratchet. So again, 16 millimeter socket and our ratchet. And there's the upper bolt. You can see the bracket is now free. And the lower bolt. And there we have our lower bolt and the bracket is free to remove. Here's the two holes that the two bolts were going in. These two are where the guide bolts from the caliper were installed. We'll set the bracket aside. Okay, now that uh, we're ready to remove the rotor hold down screw, we don't have a caliper so we can't step on the brake pedal to hold the rotor. We'll position our screw here. Just in put a large screwdriver up in one of the vent holes. We won't be putting a lot of torque on this. We'll use our six millimeter Allen head bit. Different screws on different models are different sizes. This one is six millimeter. And there. Now this one comes off a lot, so it was easy to remove. You may find that the screw on yours, it doesn't really want to come out. If the Allen head becomes damaged and the screw will not come out. You will need to drill through the head of the screw up to the shank so the screw can, head can come off. At that point, you can remove the rotor and then you'll have to drill through the screw and use an easy out to remove the remaining portion. Now the rotor is ready to come off. Like that. At this point, we're ready for the new rotor. We'll clean our hub flange surface with our brake parts cleaning brush. Get off any old grease, or if this is a car that the rotor hasn't been off quite a few times, you may find a lot of rust and corrosion here. We want to clean all that off so the new rotor fits nice and flat to prevent any pulsation in the brakes or to prevent the rotor from rusting to the hub. There we go. That's good and that's ready for the new rotor. Now we've got our new brake rotor. You can see on here there's a uh, preservative applied to the rotor surface to prevent it from rusting in storage. We'll use the brake parts cleaner and a rag to remove the preservative. Just spray the surface. And use a rag to clean the preservative and the spray off. There's what we're pulling off. And we'll do the same thing on the rear. This is the inside surface of the rotor. With that, this rotor is ready for installation. We'll set it aside for the moment. Now we want to keep our greasy hands off of the rotor. We don't want any grease on the uh, rotor contact surface. We're going to put a little bit of the anti-seize compound 
on the hub flange to prevent any future corrosion. So this is the Lubramali copper-based anti-seize. We'll put some here. And we'll spread it around. Now, we don't want globs of this. We're going to do this so that there's just a thin layer left behind. So this is all going to be extra. We'll get rid of that on our rag. And just continue to spread this around. If we have too much here, it'll actually fling off of the hub onto the rotor surface, and we don't want that to happen. So just a light layer. This isn't actually greasing anything. It's just keeping the surface from corroding in the future. There we go. Now we have our hub flange all set for the rotor installation. Here's our rotor hold down screw hole right here. And in preparation, before we go further, we're going to take the new rotor hold down screw. And we always want to use a new one so that we have a nice fresh Allen hole and we won't have problems in removal somewhere down the road. Put a little bit of anti-seize on the screw itself. We'll set that aside. And we'll install the fresh rotor. Line up the rotor hold down screw and install the, install the screw in the hole. Grab a ratchet. Now, the screw does not need to be extremely tight. It's only holding the rotor in place on the hub in a static manner. So that's all set. We're ready to go with that. Now we need to reinstall our caliper mount bracket. Before we do, we're going to clean the areas where the pad ears ride. We'll take our brake cleaning brush again. Clean the tracks where the pad ears ride. And this is really the only area that needs, uh, needs cleaning. This one's pretty clean, so it won't take a lot of work. There's not a lot of corrosion here. Okay, so that's all we need. Okay. Now we'll lubricate these areas with the uh, disc brake synthetic grease. Put a small dab and we'll spread these. We don't want globs. We don't want any uh, excess coming off and again getting on the brake rotors or the pads. Okay, now we're ready to install the uh, bracket and slide it into place. Take a bolt, start it on the top one and start the bottom bolt. Then again, we'll use our 16 millimeter socket and ratchet to tighten the bolts. And a good snug there. Now we'll use our Bavarian Autosport digital torque wrench and tighten these particular ones to 81 foot-pounds. The torque for your model will be in the Bentley repair manual. There's one. And clear. And two. So now the bracket is ready to go. Now we're ready to install the caliper and the pads.